The following half-hour show is a paid political program and is not endorsed by this station, management, or staff. The following program is sponsored by Excalibur Insurance Management Services. Before we get to today's two-part show uh, with United States Senate candidate Dave McCormick, the Republican nominee, I thought I at least would like to uh, welcome you back. I hope your summers were, were fun-filled and safe. Uh, summer is a great time to take a break. I know I need one myself, and, uh, but I'm ready and looking forward to bringing you what's the second half of our 11th year, the fall season of our 11th year. Uh, I've said before, it's an amazing where all that time has gone, but uh, we have a wonderful lineup of fall guests that will impact uh, both the national and state picture uh, in this country for our future, and uh, we look forward to bringing them to you. And again, we're starting with one right here in Pennsylvania in a very important potential swing state, uh, not only in the presidential election, but for United States Senator. And as I said, we are pleased to welcome Dave McCormick for a two-part show. This show will, beside this one, will air with uh, uh, Dave McCormick next week. We bring him back as the Republican nominee in 2024 to attempt to flip the United States Senate seat which is currently held by three-term Democratic Senator Bob Casey. Mr. McCormick has extraordinary qualifications. Dave was born and raised in, in the Pittsburgh area before his family left and moved to Bloomsburg. Dave's father, James, was president of Bloomsburg University and he was the chancellor for the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education. Dave excelled academically and athletically and received an appointment to West Point he graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering. He was a four-time letterman on the Army wrestling team and co-captain. At this point, Dave interrupted his education to begin his military service and went to the Airborne and Ranger School of the United States Army and became an honor graduate of the Ranger School. He then joined the 82nd Airborne Division at Fort Bragg. In 1991, Dave was part of the first wave of U.S. troops sent to Iraq during the first Gulf War. He rose through leadership, becoming the XO of a forward combat engineering company tasked with clearing minefields and destroying enemy munitions. For his accomplishments, Dave was awarded the Bronze Star. He then resumed his education, earning his doctorate from Princeton University in International Relations. Dave's career in public service began during the administration of George W. Bush where he served in several key departments, including as Undersecretary of the Treasury, being Principal Advisor to Secretary Henry Paulson. Dave also served as Undersecretary of Commerce for Industry and Security. And finally, he became a Deputy National Security Advisor for International Economic Policy. We look forward to speaking with him today in part one on his reasons for running and the issues that face America and the differences he presents with incumbent Senator Bob Casey. This is the Volpe Report, a weekly news and political interview show examining the latest local, state, and national issues with Chuck Volpe. Insightful, informative, controversial. The area's premier political talk show, The Volpe Report. Dave, welcome to The Volpe Report. Hey Chuck, good to see you. Let me start with the most generic of all questions, but maybe the most important one I'll ask you, how's the campaign going? Yeah, well, Chuck, thanks for having me. I was up, up in your neighborhood uh, over the weekend. I was in um, Scranton, went to the La Festa, St. Peter's Mass on Sunday, and then Wyoming County Fair and Sullivan County. So I've been, I've been all over our, our great Commonwealth this weekend. And here's my honest assessment. I, I got in the, the race October 1st of last year. And if you'd have told me that on Labor Day weekend, we would be where we are, I, I'd feel great about it. I, I mean, I, I feel excited about the future, and I think we're going to win. Um, top of the ticket, President Trump and uh, and uh, Vice President Harris are neck and neck. Um, in most polls, President Trump's uh, in the lead by, by a, a small margin. I think that's going to grow when people get to see the kind of uh, liberal San Francisco agenda that, uh, that she represents. Uh, Senator let, me, Casey, let me just correct one thing. Yeah. I'll call it a Marxist progressive anti-American agenda, but go ahead. I can say it, those things. 
And it's extreme. It's yeah. extreme, man. And Tim Walls is worse. Worse. And, uh, you know, I'll come back to that because I ran a commercial that you may have missed. I want to talk to you about it because it went, it went crazy. Seven million views on this thing. Wow. Second, you know, with Senator Casey, uh, I've I've closed in on the polls. I'm within a margin of error in the last five or six public polls. My, my internal polling says the same. And the reason is that people view him uh, as uh, weak and uh, not able to stand up to the crazy liberal agenda in his party, the radical agenda that's uh, that's taken us in the wrong direction. I feel great on the ground. I feel like there's a, a real movement afoot. So, uh, you know, you and I have talked about this. I'm a wrestler. And my I wasn't the best wrestler in the world. I wrestled in college. But I always knew that if I could get into the last period within a point or two, I'd win. And the reason is it's all about guts. It's all about grit. It's all about uh, fighting. It's all mental game and work and work. And uh, so I'm I'm fired up to for the final sprint here. And uh, you know I'm running because I think the country is in deep trouble, and uh, we got to get things on track. And I I think I'm the kind of leader, uh, based on my experience as, as in the military, West Point, um, make, uh, building jobs, creating jobs here in Pennsylvania. I think I got something to to really contribute to Pennsylvania and the country, and I'd be honored to do it. So uh, I feel good. The, the Casey campaign and the Democrats are clearly trying to portray you as you're not from Pennsylvania, that you're like yeah. Doc Oz. You're this guy that has almost no connection to Pennsylvania. Now, you've been on my show. You're getting to that point. I, I'm proud to call you a regular guest. You've been on seven or eight times over in the last two years. So I know your story, and I know that's a lot of bunk and garbage, but I figure I would let you answer it because it, it, it works better when it's not a 30-second response ad and a lot cheaper than doing that. It sure. gives you a chance to, to expound on your Pennsylvania roots. And if yeah. you're not Pennsylvania Americana, then nothing is. But go ahead. Thank, thanks, Chuck. Yeah, yeah listen, it's um, uh, the, the big takeaway from politics is it's hard to believe how much people lie about you. Senator Casey has run a number of ads that, that are lies. And, uh, you know, I'm responding to some of them, but not, not all of them. And the reason for the attacks are that, that Senator Casey doesn't have a record to run on. So I want to start with that. Listen, I'm uh, I'm proud of my Pennsylvania story. Seventh generation Pennsylvanian. Uh, my dad was Indiana County. My mom was Punxsutawney. Uh, I always make the joke uh, that I'm running against Punxsutawney Bob because we only see him every every six <laughs> years. And I was born in Washington uh, County, uh, outside of Pittsburgh. I grew up in Bloomsburg. Uh, my dad was the president of the of Bloomsburg State College, and we had a farm. And you know, I had the a, a typical. Pennsylvania upbringing. I uh, was a paper boy. I baled hay. I trimmed Christmas trees. I worked on the farm. I uh, played football, wrestled. I was the bus boy at the local McGee Hotel. And uh, and and honestly, wrestling got me into West Point. Uh, uh, Senator Arlen Specter, Pennsylvania senator, uh, nominated me, but wrestling got me uh, got me over the hump. And I wrestled at West Point. I was the co-captain of the team. And then and then went to Ranger School and the and the 82nd Airborne Division, where I was an officer, and I went to Iraq. So I. You know, the first uh, 27 years of my life uh, were uh, in Pennsylvania or serving. And then I came back to Pennsylvania and ran a great company in Pittsburgh for a number of years, created hundreds of jobs, and then went to public service again. So I've spent more than uh, half of my life living in Pennsylvania, another 14 years serving uh, our great country. I did run a firm uh, in my 40s and early 50s uh, in Pennsylvania, in uh, Connecticut, rather, a big investment firm. And uh, during that time, I, I owned uh, a family farm, which I still have in Bloomsburg. And in 2022, I, I moved back to Pittsburgh, uh, where I had three of my daughters, to run for office. And the reason I'm doing that is because uh, I believe in duty on our country, uh, which I learned at West Point. I believe that I have a lot to offer uh, as a senator from Pennsylvania for our great commonwealth and our country. And uh, this is what we want for our kids. We want them to have the kind of opportunities that I've had, but I'm afraid if we don't get things back on track, uh, we're not going to have that for, for our kids, for your kids, Chuck, for my kids, our grandkids. This is about America's future. We need leaders uh, that can change the direction of our country. And I'm a Pennsylvania kid through and through, and I, I think I've got a lot to offer. Well, uh, there's no question about that. Again, having gotten to know you, your resume is spectacular. And, you know, to have the, you know, almost work ethic that was instilled in you working on your family farm that generally doesn't necessarily equate with having a father who's the president of, of, of a university. You know, that's, yeah. that's usually a different, that's more of like the Democrats that live in the gated communities have the presidents of, of universities and they don't grow up in farms and 
get wrestling scholarships to, uh, to uh, you know, our, our great military academy at West Point. So I'm, I'm glad you said that, Chuck, because my, my mom and dad, are, my, my mom and dad are both public school teachers. Uh, and my dad went on and got a, a doctorate in education. And that, that was what led him on his path into higher ed. But I, I mean, I, everything, uh, you know, we, we're all by product of, uh, of our families. And uh, my mom and dad um, are still with us. Thank God. They live in Enola outside of Harrisburg. And uh, they, they were tough. I mean, we had to work. I, I'd get up at five in the morning to del deliver papers. And uh, they never uh, let us think uh, we had anything other than to work on our, on, our, on our, you know, nothing, rest on our laurels, but work hard for whatever was going to come our way. And uh, now the funny thing is my dad's never been in politics, but he calls me every day and tells me what I'm doing wrong on the campaign. <laughs> or says, can you believe that that those commercials, they're lying about you so much, you got to do something about it. So um, this is uh, this has gone full circle. Uh, you've been critical of, of Senator Casey about a lack of a record, uh, effectively. Uh, he's been there 18 years. Um, so if you were to do a compare and contrast why you're a better choice for people, what do that for me. Yeah, listen, this is... a. Uh, you know, I grew up, you know, 45, 50 miles from where Senator Casey grew up. My dad actually worked for Governor Casey. Um, so, uh, you know, listen, this is, I, I understand the Casey name. Senator Casey uh, has been in office for 30 years and he, he's he been in the Senate 18 years. And, uh, you know, I, I honestly uh, think if you're a Pennsylvanian and you ask yourself, how has my life gotten better because of Bob Casey? What, what difference has he made in the Senate? The answer is not much. Not much. And so what I say on the campaign trail is uh, if you like the status quo, if you think that sky high inflation, um, which is, you know, killing working families is OK, then you should vote for Bob Casey. If you think a wide open border and 4000 fentanyl deaths uh, is, uh, is 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 OK, you should you should vote for Senator Casey because it's the result of his 98 percent vote for everything uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris have done. And what's happened is Senator Casey, um, I don't know what his actual views are. He ran as a as as a as a moderate. He ran as a, a conservative Democrat, which is, you know, I, I spent a lot of time uh, in, in Scranton. That, there's, that's a lot of the Democrats there are sort of traditional old school conservative Me. Democrat. Right. That's you. Me. 45 so, years Andrew, a Democrat, a conservative Democrat. He ran as that, Chuck. And, and he's anything but that. This is a guy now who's voted for wide open borders, sanctuary cities, who's voted for, you know, supports the student loan forgiveness. I mean, can you think of a more unfair, ridiculous thing that all of us, people that didn't go to college are paying for the student loans of people who did go to college? He's, he's supported things like uh, biological males competing with biological females. His position on abortion has moved uh, to the, the far extreme of the Democratic Party. He's voted for uh, abortion up until the due date. These are a set of positions that are just out of step with Pennsylvania. And now with Vice President Harris at the top of the ticket, you have truly a, a person who is a San Francisco extreme uh, liberal. And Bob Casey will be a sure vote for that agenda. And uh, I wanted to mention, Chuck, if, if you haven't seen it, um, I, about a day after Senator Casey endorsed Kamala Harris, I ran a commercial. My team... I had an idea of, of, of what I wanted to do. My team put together a commercial and uh, and they showed it to my wife and I at about four o'clock. And we said, run that, uh, post that, run that digitally. They, they posted it at about five. And about eight o'clock that night, we took the whole team to a Pirates game. And somebody leaned over to me and said, 800,000 views. Wow. It's gone on to had 7 million views, Chuck. Wow. And here's the, there's not a Republican word, not a Republican voice. It has Senator Casey saying, Kamala Harris is ready to be president today. You're going to love her when you get to know her. Then it has her saying, I want to ban fracking in her own words. I want to transition energy workers. I want to give amnesty to 10 million illegal immigrants. I want to make sure they get federal benefits. I want to have mandatory buybacks of your guns. This is the, this is the one that my friends in Bloomsburg didn't like. We want to restrict red meat consumption with further government <laughs> intervention. We want to eliminate private health care insurance, all in her words, no Republican voice. This is all things she said in the last three or four years. Then it goes to Senator Casey again, and, and his voice says, you're going to love her when you get to know her. That's what we're up against. 
that's the direction of the country, uh, which, you know, you used Marxist, socialist, a government intervention in all aspects of our lives. This is what happens uh, with uh, Vice President Harris as the president, Kamala Harris, Bob Casey, a sure vote for that agenda. That's what this election is about. And uh, and that's why I feel optimistic. Uh, you know, I know in my heart, wherever I go, that that agenda, that kind of weakness, that kind of radical liberalism that Senator Casey has uh, supported, that's just that's just out of step with Pennsylvania. It may work for California. I'm not even judging it. It may work for California. Well, it it's doesn't work there either. Record right. numbers are leaving California. Record. Right. They lead the country in migration. How beautiful is that irony of people yeah. that live there and got to know their policies, Democratic policies, progressive left policies. They're leaving the states that stayed in control. But I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, I couldn't resist. You're, you're right. You're absolutely right. So anyway, that's, how, that's why I feel great about it. And that's the contrast. And so to come back where I started, I basically said to people on the campaign trail, if you want status quo, vote for Casey. If you want change, if you want someone who's been a leader in the military, a leader in business, someone who's independent, I don't owe anybody anything, Chuck, you know that. Um, I don't owe any, I don't, as much as I sub, uh, appreciate President Trump's support, I don't owe President Trump anything. I don't owe the, the Republican establishment of Washington anything. The only people I owe anything to are the great people of our Commonwealth if uh, if they give me the honor of, of going to Washington on their behalf. You, you raise an issue, Dave, that I want to uh, get back to. We, we had some fun at California's expense, deservedly so. But I was re watching an interview. And if I had to make an argument of why I left the Democratic Party and what the Democratic Party, the national, I want to be clear, Pennsylvania is loaded with my friends. 45 years as a Democrat. I love those people. I am them. Yeah. And they are me. Well, so it's not a, a, it's what the Democratic Party at the national level and the top state level has become. It's been hijacked. So at any rate, you've made some points about the leadership of the Democrats and Kamala Harris and, uh, and, 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 and all that. I watched the best example, exhibit, if it was in a court of law, that I would put up to show what's happened to the Democratic Party and why it's failing America and why I left it. I would look at the transformation in Bill Maher. The HBO guy that, that has a, it, tens of millions of followers. It's one of the highest rated HBO shows. He's been on for years and years. He was, his leftist credentials as a true liberal to the point where I had trouble like, like watching him because he was always, you knew he was going to be a liberal left point of view. He's done a change and he's admitted it. He said, he's spoken into the camera. I'm going to say like a 180 change. Not that he's gone conservative or Republican. He's just reminded everybody, Dave, of what liberalism is, classic liberalism. Thomas Jefferson, John Rousseau, uh, 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 Stu John Stuart Mill, uh, all of those men known to history as classic liberals. Thomas Jefferson liberals. That type of liberalism doesn't exist in the Democratic Party. And Marr went on to point that out. And he, at length, he said, we believe in limited government. We believe in individual freedoms. We believe in inalienable natural rights given to us from the creator, not from the, the, the ben, you know, beneficence of the Democratic Party. And he went on and right. on. So, there, so I started actually watching him. On one interview, and I, I wanted to make this point and get your comment. I, like, I, I had to like do this to make sure I heard it. I replayed it. He's interviewing Nancy Pelosi. One of the figureheads in Mount Rushmore of toxic progressivism, illiberalism, not liberalism. He made right. a point that California has just signed a bill into law that will create a situation where the California state government and taxpayers will finance housing for illegal alien migrants. They're going to pay for their housing. And Moore was like, right. like, what? I, yeah. Did I get that wrong? And he yeah. went on to expound about if you have no borders, you have no country, that you're asking taxpayers that are here legally that became citizens to pay tax dollars to put illegals who broke our laws, you're going to put them up. And here's Nancy Pelosi's response. You had to see Bill Maher's face. She said, well, that's the American dream, isn't it? Not the American yeah. dream I learned. I don't know about you. So talk a little bit about what, how far yeah. left. I don't need people back to Kamala Harris. You, you're right. They need to pay attention to her views. So yeah. go. 
Yeah, listen, uh, I mean, I, I think that's why, you know, through, throughout our lifetimes, Chuck, I think we're about the same age. There's been people uh, telling us this is the most important election of your lifetime. <laughs> but I honestly think this one is. And the reason is just what you said. It's the contrast of ideas um, of what America is all about and what what are, is critical to sustaining the the exceptionalism of America. And you know, there's two concepts I'll, I'll, I'll just highlight. You've, you've identified a number. First of all, sovereignty. Like you have to protect the so your sovereign borders. You, if you don't have sovereign borders, you don't have a country. And uh, the Democratic Party has consistently said that uh, supported open borders. Bob Casey's voted against uh, additional funding for the Border Patrol for sanctuary cities and for a path to legal citizenship for those who enter the country illegally. That is definitionally what is going to erode um, the, the very essence of our country because you lose control of your borders and you lose control of a legal process. My wife's an immigrant from Egypt. I am pro legal immigration, but when we have wide open borders, we lose control and it creates national security problems, economic problems. It, it's destroying cities like San Francisco, like Philadelphia. This is a, a, a huge, huge problem. And then to give all those illegal immigrants these economic benefits uh, is uh, essentially erodes our fiscal stability. And, um, and you know, it's, it's just another part of this economic agenda which is going to destroy the most dynamic economy in the world. So let me give you a couple examples. Kamala Harris's first big uh, economic speech, she she talks about essentially price controls. Price They were right? price controls. Which, That's what they were. But, but, which is what Bob Casey has been saying. What's happening is greedflation, shrinkflation. Listen, I'm not supporting big, big corporations. We have in Pennsylvania anti-price gouging legislation. What's happening is we have a record high inflation because of the five trillion dollars of new spending that Biden and Harris have put in place, that Bob Casey has voted for every step of the way. So there's an economic policy which is just spend, spend, spend in ways that you and I and others couldn't possibly do in their own homes. And then there's a giveaway culture. So what you just described in California with homes is consistent with student loan forgiveness. I mean, Chuck, can you believe it? A hundred and sixty billion dollars of student loan forgiveness. That's bigger than the Army's budget that has been proposed by Biden, Harris, and Casey. Now, just think about this. I went to high school in Bloomsburg, uh, Bloomsburg Public High School. Um, uh, two of my buddies uh, both went into law enforcement. One didn't. One, one well, went to college, not a four-year college, and then ultimately went on to become a sheriff. I don't know if he couldn't afford four years or didn't want to, but he's paying for this student loan forgiveness for people that are making over $100,000 a year. And my other buddy who took a couple extra years to pay for college because he didn't want to take on too much loans. All of us are paying for this loan forgiveness for um, for students of today who are going on to great things. It's un-American. It's unfair. It's the same with uh, uh, mortgages in California, like Pelosi's proposing. These, these are un-American ideas. They're not based on merit. They're not based on free enterprise. They're based on a giveaway culture where government controls everything. It will destroy... Uh, what made America special, and that's 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 your greatest. What I would what I would love to do is, and I know I can't. This is a fantasy, but I'd like to go, uh, you know, and talk to Democrats, um, suburban Democrats that are are moderate, soccer moms, as they're called, and I'd like to go through in that group, those focus groups, and ask them how, in conscience, they with daughters can vote yeah. for a, a team, uh, uh, Harris and, and, and Walls, that are going to push Title IX to the brink of allowing biological males to take their daughter's glory, their victories, their scholarships away from them. They're going to be walking around. Tim Walls has put condoms in boys' bathrooms in public schools in Minnesota. Right. Like, that's what we're going to have in Pennsylvania. I'd like to ask them how, with record inflation, a border crisis, how they can just, like, I, I can't, I would like to ask people that are involved in natural gas and drilling and fracking, how they would vote for somebody who's going to do away with it. Biden has already taken us there, and she was, now she says, I, I, I'm for fracking. That's a bald-faced lie. Like, I like your comment on some of the lies, I mean, I know, I know American citizens aren't stupid and they're treating them like they are, but go ahead. Yeah, it's, that's uh, that's why I mentioned that commercial. It's in her own words. 
you, you have to believe that she's going to be a fundamentally different person, not just on one issue, two issues, like her whole agenda, you have to believe is radically different than what she said it was three or four years ago, what her entire track record has been in public life. This is a person that's completely out of step with Pennsylvania. And yet um, the, the media, Chuck, and I think it's uh, fair to say this media has given her a complete free pass on flip-flopping on every one of her positions. And I'm with you. I don't think Pennsylvanians are going are, are gonna to stand for that. I don't think, you know, I think I'm, when I'm on the campaign trail, which I am always <laughs> these days, I mean, people are like, God, the lies. And so that's our challenge as Republicans, to make sure that we're continuing to come back to, wait a second, what do you feel? Do you feel like the economy is better than it was three and a half years ago? Because they're saying it is. Does it feel that way? Um, you know, these restrictions on on um, uh, on natural gas development, uh, on on fossil fuels. Um, do, you, do you think it makes sense that President Biden and Bob Casey supported this, that President Biden dictated that by 2032, 70 percent of all new vehicles that are sold have to be EVs? Does that sound right to you in Scranton, Pennsylvania? Um, the lying and the and the flip flopping is absolutely shocking. But but. In Senator Casey's case, I, I think it's something different. And I, I, I want to say this, like, I, I believe that his challenge uh, is not that he's flip-flopped on all these positions necessarily. I think his challenge is he's too weak to stand up to his own party. The party has moved dramatically to the left. Um, you know, I, I know a little bit about the Casey family. I certainly know about his uh, his father. I think the position Senator Casey is supporting, I don't believe he necessarily believes them. I think that that's where he has to be, to be with his party, and he doesn't have the courage to stand up and fight it. And and that's uh, and that's 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 a real shame. And he also is is lying about my positions. And I want to bring up a position that's a sensitive topic, Chuck. But you and I have talked about it before. It's it's the issue of abortion, which um, um, you know there's ads being run uh, in your area right now about my position on abortion that are absolute lies, complete 100% lies. And so I'd like to have the opportunity to, to say what Please. my position is. Go ahead. But talk about this. So listen, I've got six daughters um, and I recognize how polarizing this issue is. And, um, and we need to find common ground on this issue. And my position is that states should decide, this is so sensitive that the voters should decide, pick representatives that represent the positions that they have on this. My position is there shouldn't be any uh, bans on abortion. There shouldn't be federal legislation on abortion. My position is that I support the three exceptions. And my position is that um, uh, I'm not in favor of Senator Casey's position, which Senator Casey has voted for legislation that would allow abortions up until the due date. I think that's an extreme position. Regrettably, uh, we're going to have to cut short uh, and end part one, even though uh, uh, the Senate nominee had McCormick was on quite a roll there. I think probably your host was as well in some very controversial subjects. But uh, at any rate, we will be back as promised next week with part two with uh, Senate nominee, Republican nominee, Dave McCormick. Now there's more places you can see the Volpe Report. Watch every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. on Fox 56 or watch on YouTube at The Volpe Report. More ways to watch. Still the same premier public affairs show dedicated to the topics that matter most to Pennsylvanians.